Hi there, my name is Erin Oltz and I'm the Librarian and Archive Specialist at Royal Botanical Gardens. I'm going to take you upstairs to the library and show you one of our important seed catalog collections. Hamilton played a pivotal role in the seed industry in the mid-19th century into the turn of the 20th century. And the collection I want to show you today is the Robert Evans Seed Catalog Collection. Robert Evans wasn't the earliest seedsman in Hamilton. He did, however, print some of the most beautiful seed catalogs, and these catalogs help tell the story of the seed industry in Hamilton. Born in Dublin, Ireland in 1843, the Evans family moved to Canada when Robert was four. They spent a short time in Toronto and then settled in Hamilton by 1848. His father was a gardener, and he quickly took up the family line of work. Young Robert Evans started working for John A. Bruce Seed Company in 1858 at the age of 14. He worked for Bruce for several years before deciding that he wanted to open his own seed company. He opened it up his shop in 1871, just two blocks away from Bruce's Seeds Warehouse. He produced stunningly beautiful catalogs, promoted mail order and quick shipping, and developed some of his own varieties of market vegetables. Evans perhaps had a better understanding of the importance of visual appeal because his catalogs were filled with colorful lithographies of the fruit and vegetables he sold. Previous to an early Evans catalog, I had never seen a potato take a centerfold image. This is the cover of Robert Evans and Company 1894 seed catalog. This is one of my favorite seed catalog covers because it gives us such insight into Hamilton and the prominence of seed companies. These are very well-dressed market gardeners selling the fruits of their labor. I love the quote at the bottom that reads, Yes, ma'am, all grown from Evans Seeds. Hamilton's early market square and city hall is the building in the right side foreground. And of course, that's Evans Seed Company building in the back. That would be the office and warehouse located at the corners of McNabb, York Street, and Market Street. Here's a description from a Spectator newspaper article about Evans Seed Company explaining the layouts and workings of the store. This description is from 1878. The ground floor is occupied as a sales room and office. The second story embraces the vegetable seed department, which is very complete, where a very large number of young women are employed in papering, boxing, and otherwise preparing stock for the market. The third story is divided into five sections. Number one room contains carrot and mango wurzel. Number two contains orchard grass, bluegrass, red top grass, perennial ryegrass, and other finer varieties. Room number three is devoted to garden peas, such as a champion of England, Philadelphia, extra early, Carter's first crop, etc., etc. Mr. Evans has personally supervised the production of several varieties in this department and can vouch for the purity of the seeds. Room number four contains Swedish turnip seed, and the amount of business done in this branch alone would astonish anyone who has not given the growth of Swedish turnip in Canada proper consideration. Room number five contains Timothy and clover seeds. The fourth story of the building is used as a storage room for onion sets, top onions, and company, and the stock is large and in fine condition. His covers grew filled with symbolism, sometimes of his dedication to the British Empire. He served in the military during the Finian raids, and he also knew that much of gardening style was coming from European influences. This is reflected not only in his catalog covers, but also in his flower and plant choices. So why did Hamilton take such a central role in seed commerce in Canada at the turn of the century? Hamilton acted as a major port from Europe and to the west of Canada. It was situated just past the fertile soils and climate of the Niagara Fruit Basket area, which continues to be a major location for food growing in Canada. Finally, Hamilton had trains. In a book championing Hamilton as the Electric City in 1910, it lists the Grand Trunk Railway System, the Southern, Northern, and Northwestern Railways converge at this point the CP Rail, the Toronto, Hamilton, and Buffalo Railway, the Michigan Central Railway, and New York Central Railway connected Hamilton. This train system boosted the postal facilities as well. As a result, seed companies in Hamilton could receive orders quicker and ship orders further and faster than many other locations. I love this cover of Evans Seed Catalog from 1895. If you look at the background of this image, front and back, you see that Evans centered the trains in their destinations as a selling point. Evans was also considered an upstanding citizen. He served in the military, participated in local government, held positions in the Great Central Fair Committee, and otherwise participated in an active civic life. His wife opened an orphanage called Home of the Friendless and Infants Home at the corner of Caroline and Duke Street. 
Evan passed away in 1899, but his widow and business partner, Andrew Agnes, continued to run the business until she sold it in 1904 to Steel Briggs, a Toronto company who saw the value of having a Hamilton location. The Robert Evans Seed Catalog Collection is part of our Centre for Canadian Historical Horticultural Studies. It's one of many important horticultural collections that we keep and preserve here in the archives. Thanks for watching.